Welcome back, my fantastic friends. This is the new series. It's called The Master Paints the Masters. It's where we have a look at some of the past masters' work, and I try and recreate that in my own style. And in this first episode, we're going to have a look at the legendary Vincent van Gogh. So let's go now and have a look at one of his greatest pieces of art. This is the Starry Night, and what an absolute lovely painting this is. Look at the swirls in the sky, the moon, and all the lovely detail down in the village below. Some prep to do, let's go do it. So what I've done here is I've just took a normal white canvas and in the white part, I've just used some white acrylic paint, just put a big blob in there. And on the black part, just some black acrylic paint. And with a, uh, a brush, <laughs> just blended it all out and gone over it. You can still see it's a bit wet in places, but we just want to take out all the brush strokes and it should dry a nice, lovely matte colour. That'll be a lovely key for when we come to put those oil paints on. So we need to leave this now to dry completely overnight and we can paint on it in the morning. Let's go over to the easel. So with the canvas completely dry, we've coated the black area with a thin coating of liquid clear and phthalo blue and then in the white part we've coated it in a thin layer of liquid white that easy so we're going to start off in here and paint with a bit of cadmium yellow what looks like a fried egg we've got something there already for the museum of modern art haven't we <laughs> but this is going to be the moon the moon in the painting so we're just going to mix that around and just swirl it out and blend it very close to the blue we don't want to touch the blue because it'll turn a nice green and that's not what we're after in this painting so it's a little bit tricky now you may notice in certain parts i'm having to speed up the painting it's just processes you've seen done before but uh, we'll just speed it up for for ease of viewing as we go along as i'm painting i'll be talking a little bit about van gogh and the starry night painting just to, uh, just to give some insight into to what the great man was about and uh, why I'm trying to emulate that painting. So, as you can see, I'm just going back into the, the yellow area with a bit more white and I'm trying to really brighten that, that moon up. I'm, I'm wiping the brush as I'm going along. I don't want to take that mucky yellow colour back into the white spot right into the middle. Just right towards the very edge, not into the blue, or we'll end up with green. There we go. Okay, so Van Gogh, he was he was named Vincent Van Gogh, and he was a Dutch post-impressionist painter who became one of the most, after his death, became one of the most famous influential figures in art in the Western world. He was born on the 30th of March 1853, but sadly died. 29th of July 1890 just 37 years old now you can see what I'm doing here is um, I have took a blender brush and I'm just very very gently blending that sky together the, the yellows and the blues and just because it's so soft that brush I can do that without making green and I can come back in here what I've done is I've taking a fan brush and I'm just really really blending it out now just swirling it up just in there because it's so soft because it's so soft and I went over with the, the soft brush I was able to not make a really bright green you'd make you'd make a lime green if you if you went on straight away and I just take out the the blending marks there just like that Okay, so let's put the moon in, a little bit of a finger painting. So, we're just going to rub this. It's white paint, right on the very edge. And these are oil paints, so we can, we can blend these quite easily without them drying out. Then with a bit more yellow, we'll just paint half a moon. If we revert back to the, the original painting, it had a nice crescent-shaped moon in there. And then a soft little brush, we're just going to tease these two colours together, just like that. So Van Gogh basically only painted in the last decade of his life, 
and in that decade created just over 2,000 works of art, including just under 900 oil paintings. And the oil paintings, most of which date from the last two years of his life, including the Starry Night. The Starry Night was painted in the last year of his life. Paintings Van Gogh did were the, um, the self-portrait. He also did sunflowers. He also did many landscapes. And this is technically a landscape, isn't it? So what you can see I'm doing now is I'm adding the stars, obviously. It's a starry night, so we're gonna add some stars. And this is just the, the pale yellow color on the little, uh, little round brush. And we're just pushing in just a few dots where the stars will be. Now, they're not gonna be accurately where the stars are on Van Gogh's painting. Again, this is just my interpretation of that painting. And I've said this many times before, everybody sees painting, artwork with their own eyes. So what I'm doing here now, I'm taking my finger and I'm just pushing that paint into the canvas and that'll, sli that'll like spread the little bit of paint that's on there outwards a little bit and slightly blend it as well slightly blend that now when we gently go over this with a soft brush this is a, a bob ross blender brush it's it's i think it's made out of pony air it's really delicate really soft we can swirl that about and we can go basically in a in an x sort of fashion and it'll create like like the glare of stars and on the tip of the back end of a brush so we're using the wooden part back end of the, the brush just like a pencil we hold it with a bit of white paint and we're dotting in the actual star body itself so we've created the halo around the star and then we're just putting in the bright sparkly bit in the middle just like that just like so and then we're going to have some hills here, so we're not too fussed about that. But we're going to work on the we're going to work on the clouds. Now Van Gogh had swirly clouds. It, it almost looked like water, like waves swirling in the in the, the main part of the painting. Almost, almost like waves. Like it's dreamy, isn't it? If you if you look back at it, it's it's a dreamy kind of painting, and that's what I'm going to try and recreate. And I'm trying to paint these these clouds. So it just comes right over that glow of the moon. And this is just titanium white on a fan brush. And we're just scrubbing in with a corner. And it's just the corner we're using. Just some white paint. And it'll pick up a bit of blue. And that's what we're after. It'll pick up a tiny bit of blue paint. And we can keep coming backwards and forwards and doing this to give it a real good bright cloudy sky now with a clean little dry brush it's a little fan brush all I'm doing is I'm blending into the blue the phthalo blue that's on the canvas all I'm doing is just blending the, the white of the clouds into the blue but I'm not top, I'm not touching the top corner I'm not touching that nice sharp that nice sharp edge, all I'm doing is I'm just tickling the base of that cloud and I'm blending it out. That's all I'm doing. Just like that. Van Gogh used um, impulsive and expressive brushwork and very bold colours in his, in his work. And I'm, I'm going to try and recreate that, but just in my style. Of course, we'll just blend blend these clouds into nothing and then we can come back with a softer brush than a fan brush and just tease tease that top edge now now you're gonna to have to forgive the arm like <laughs> like I always say it gets in the way sometimes we'll just tease that top edge very gently very lightly we don't want to we don't want to break it up we just want to slightly diffuse slightly diffuse that top edge 
there and then we can work this we can work this down as well and then we can add another layer of clouds remember there was a couple of big swirly clouds in this sky so that's what we'll have dreamy watery effect that's how I see it I see it as a like a, a wave there we go so we'll just add some more white paint in but we're working on one layer at a time don't want to get greedy and do it all at once just one layer at a time and we'll encase that those stars there and then just blend like we did before just blend that down into the blue swirl him around and again we're not touching that top edge we're not touching that nice sharp white edge there just with a fan brush even though Van Gogh was one of the forefathers of building modern art he was not commercially successful and uh, unfortunately his suicide came after years of mental illness and depression and, and poverty which, uh, which, is, which is a real, real, it's a real shame. So as you see me tease these little clouds together and, and tweak them into the sky, Vincent van Gogh, he, uh, he uh, painted the Starry Night picture in 1889 during a stay at an asylum of St. Paul de Mousseau near St. Remy de Provence. And Van Gogh, he, he did all right in the asylum. He was allowed more, more privileges and space than, than most of the other patients. And uh, he could move around the hospital grounds and was allowed to paint and read. And even at some point, he was given an own, his own art studio in there. And while he, uh, while he suffered from the occasional relapse into paranoia and fits, he, uh, he seemed to be recovering he was actually diagnosed with epileptic fits but he seemed to be recovering and doing all right now what you can see I'm just uh, tweak the clouds I'm just gonna put a few little little floatery clouds stringy clouds that are just gonna just glide through the sky just to give it a little bit of a break up from the big big wavy dreamy surreal clouds that we see some some little floaters that are just 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 hanging loose around here just like that and these, these again just titanium white on the fan brush and put some in here sneaking in between those two clouds just like that there we go there we go now unfortunately Van Gogh he, he relapsed and he, he began to suffer from hallucinations and have suicidal thoughts. And this brought on um, an era of his painting where he, he started to, to paint in darker colours. This is where the Starry Night was born. Of course, it's, it's, it's painted in, in blues and, and, and darker colours. Now, a, a, a lot of this this uh, landscape is, uh, is is sky. There's there's, uh, there's hills and there's there's mountains, or like a small mountain, I suppose, and a, a little village and some trees in the in the foreground. But the big the big statement piece on this painting is the sky, and that's exactly what I want to create here. Now, with a tiny little fan brush, here's a tiny one as well. All we're doing is just just highlighting some of those stringy clouds with a little bit of yellow paint. Again, we're not blending that, we're just, just putting a tiny bit on. What I've done here, I've taken a little bit of pale yellow colour, really thin paint, I've added a little bit of paint thinner to this, and I'm just putting some more little tiny stars up here in the sky, just, just wherever they should be, that's exactly where they should be. And of course, these won't have any halo, so they'll, they'll uh, look a little bit further away, a little bit more distant. And what I can do, I've just taken a little bit of a plastic, plastic lid and I've mixed up some white paint with a little bit of paint thinner. I'm just flicking that off, just off this little script brush. 
because I've mixed it with paint thinner rather than using liquid white. The paint thinner will have a little bit of a violent reaction with the liquid clear that's on the canvas and create another dimension. You, you can't see it yet, but it will take about 15 minutes to, to start. And if you look very closely, what you'll start to see is, is tiny little specks of, um, of like little stars and, and, and things happening way, way out into space. And we're just working on some of these clouds a little bit more, just down here. That's all we're doing, just, just bring them down, tease them together, blend them. We don't want those harsh edges, don't want those harsh edges being disturbed. There, just like that. Happy days, eh? Happy days. Now, if you've got a suggestion of a past master's piece of artwork that you want me to recreate, um, leave it down in the comments. I'd, I'd be thrilled to, to read what your, what your thoughts are. You know, we've got Monet, Turner, any of the greats. I'm going to try and recreate a couple. And if you, if you want, just leave me a comment and we'll see what we can do. Now, let's work on these hills down here. And these are pretty far away so you can't tell much detail on them now I must state again this is my this is my interpretation of uh, of Van Gogh's Starry Night painting I'm not trying to copy it like for like so there will be some slight differences in the painting there so this is just a mixture of, of um, burnt umber and Van Dyke brown on the fan brush and we're just using that and creating such lovely effects we'll just bring that down sloping downwards there just like that we'll just clean the brush off on the canvas there and of course that color that we put on will be mixing with the blues all the time so you get a lot of variant of color as we go down the canvas. The harder we tap on, the more distinct that blue will show through. And we'll just put all sorts of nice little little foothills down here in various shades. Of course you can see I've hit uh, a bit more of the paler colour. So I've added a bit more of the it's basically the the, the pale colour that we made the, the halos out of. It's, it's cad yellow and white. I mix that with a brown paint here and there. I'll vary the colours backwards and forwards. Play with the browns and the, uh, the yellows. And of course, when it hits the blue, we'll, we'll give a, a slight tint of green there. The harder I tap, the more, the more of the blue will show through. And as we get closer to us, we can see a bit more scenery. So it gets a little bit more greener. That's what I want to. That's what I want to create. Now I haven't killed all the all that's on the canvas. I, I've, I've left some intentional openings of that blue in the canvas showing through. That will give the impression of shadows. And where the where the light is zinging through, we can, we can put a bit of highlight on there. The moonlight is shining onto onto the east side of this little area or this little plateau down here just like that just on the fan brush that's all we have to do the fan brush creates such lovely effects both in clouds and in little hills like this now if we think back to the painting there was a, a little forest down here so on a large rounded brush I've just hit sap green and varying that with the yellow ochre and cad yellow and eventually every now and again where I want the sun, where I want the moon nearly said sun then <laughs> where I want the moon to hit the moonlight to actually hit that those leaves and those that foliage and put a touch of white on there but not much not much just a touch don't want to overkill this this is again it's it's night time, it's just a moonlit starry night. 
we're just creating lots of little little trees that are living down here there's going to be a village down here like we've seen in the original painting there's going to be a big tree or two or three in the foreground so we'll play back and forwards with the colors just see we touched a little bit of cad yellow there looks like the uh, the moonlight is really zinging across those trees there think about each individual tree as we're painting this not just hitting at random and putting some thought process into it just like that happy days happy days Van Gogh he uh, suffered from psychotic episodes and delusions hallucinations and although he was he was worried about his his health and his mental stability he often neglected his his physical health and uh, he didn't eat too good and he, he drank rather a lot he drank quite heavily now i'm just uh, just putting in some some base ground for where we're going to have the uh, the little village down here so that's just it's all on the fan brush a lot of this will be covered by the little village but some will show through that's what we're after. Some will show through. There. Happy days. Now, now Van Gogh, he, like we've talked about, he, he suffered from episodes and delusions and hallucinations. And he, he had a, a long-term friend, a, a buddy, uh, who, who was also uh, into the arts. And, and, uh, he was called uh, Gogwin. And... Uh, after one evening, they uh, ended up confrontating. The confrontation began, and Van Gogh took a razor blade and, and severed his own ear, his own left ear, which is uh, one one of the legacies Van Gogh left. Was that infamous story? Now I'm just working, I'm working down here on what will be uh, the little village. So I'm just. Just basically, all I'm doing is I'm taking the uh, a flat brush, and just basically blocking in various houses. We've got a we've got a church here, so we'll put a, a chapel on and a, a steeple. And this is just it's like a, a, a grey paint that we've mixed. So it's white, obviously mixed with a touch of black and some browns in there and it's going to pick up the colours that are underneath so let's put a spire on this it's just on the, on the very edge of a thin flat paintbrush we could if this was a large large canvas we could do this with a palette knife in fact we'll grab the palette knife and we'll just scrape out some of that excess paint that's underneath because we don't want every house to turn <laughs> to turn green we can cut the base in some of these these buildings off so yeah we'll just vary the colours there's lots of different coloured houses in the original painting that's what we'll do again not all of these houses will, will show through we may cover some up with a big tree or two or three <laughs> so we've got some red ones there and this is quite detailed work which is it can be quite tricky to get this right if you have a, a building that looks quite kind of crooked and looks like it's going to fall over that's that's all right in a way because sometimes old houses especially in the period that this was produced there was old wooden houses that looked quite like that so we just vary the colors backwards and forwards in different shades on different sides of the, the house the houses let's work a bit more on this uh, on this steeple here this spire is it a steeple or a spire I can never remember. I can never remember. But if you'd like to enlighten me, please let me know. <laughs> so yeah, 
we just work on that just with a thin script brush just down here there very thin paint we'll come back and we'll paint some little windows some shading on different sides there happy days and with the addition to uh, to the church to the painting is said uh, that uh, Van Gogh he, he brought God into his work which is uh, which we can see there with the church now we're just putting some little windows in in some of these houses this is pale pale yellow mixed with a little tiny bit of paint thinner then we'll just come back with some of that grassy colour on the uh, the fan brush and just sit these little houses and church this little village way back into the painting again tiny tiny little bit of lighter colour just where where the moonlight will sparkle there and we've converted the colours between the houses just like so happy days happy days now after his time in the asylum he discharged himself and, uh, and Van Gogh went to live in a little town just uh, just outside Paris and even though he was under doctor supervision his depression continued and uh, unfortunately on the 27th of July 1890 Van Gogh shot himself in the chest with a revolver and he died from his injuries two days later which is an extremely sad story for such such a great artist such a talented man and what he left behind was was an amazing legacy of fantastic works including the Stag and I and if we think back to the Stag and I how, how dreamlike and surreal that was it's a, it's a fantastic piece of work now let's put some trees in here. Now in the original painting, Van Gogh painted uh, uh, cypress trees, which are all wavy, and add to that that sort of dreamy effect. Taking that dark colour, sap green and black, that was on the brush, and I've just hit cad yellow, and that will give some some sort of highlights. Now the highlights, because this moon is is telling us where his highlights should be, will be on the right hand side of the tree. And every now and again, we'll add a little sparkler on these branches. We'll add a little sparkler, just with a touch of white. Now the Stagonite painting is, 
that Van Gogh did in the last year of his life is homed in the Museum of Modern Art at New York in, in the USA. And what values can we put on that? The, the value, it's impossible to put a value on such a famous and, and, and treasured piece of, of artwork by Van Gogh, but some of his other paintings have sold for more than $80 million at auction. And I think the Starry Night is one of the most iconic Van Gogh paintings. So a rough value would, would possibly put it around the $100 million mark. Or that is an equivalent of, of 74, 75 British pounds. That's, that's eye-watering, isn't it? <laughs> eye-watering. So this is my nod to the great man Van Gogh. Starry night. We're just adding some little tiny bushes down there, just just like we did on the big trees in the in the in the forest in the next to the village. Just like that. We put a little dog on this little building there. We want want the little uh, innkeeper to get in there, don't we? <laughs> Happy days. I think we'll sign this one. So please let me know. Let me know what you want me to paint next, which master you want me to explore next, down in the comments. So let's compare them both side by side. This is the finished one by me and the original by Van Gogh. And let me know your thoughts in the comments, my fantastic friends. Did we do, did we do the Starry Night justice? If you did like this, give me a thumbs up, give me a comment, give me a subscribe. And until next time, happy days.